Good afternoon. Welcome once again to episode, excuse me, welcome once again to my Facebook Live. This is episode 827. I was like, not the same episode again, it's different. This is episode 827, as I just said, and this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube, and I'll explain at the back end um, where you can find the replays. So, um, topic today, before I jump in to introduce myself, is um, not, not asking for help is weakness. Ignoring help is weakness. Asking for help, getting support is get, how you get back to your strength, is kind of what I said. I'll explain in more detail what I mean by that. And this is a self promotion, just so you know, going in. But I'm speaking about this in this is a general theme and also why you might be not as happy as you want to be. Stay tuned. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself and explain why I'm doing these talks. That's why 827 of them, I've done a few now, and a bit more. So, my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already know that. Uh, I am. An inspirational speaker, relationship and love expert. I'm also the best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. And I also help women create balance in love, life and business. So that's my main focus in life because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work and also what started these talks over two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So as, as, as I said, today's episode number 827 it means I've done a bunch of these and I'll tell you at the back end where you can find the replays so you can get to watch all my recordings if you so desire. At least search through them with the titles and find ones that are relevant, that are relevant to you because I'm sure there's something that will help you. And maybe today's will too. So let me just dump in, jump, dump in, jump into the topic at hand, which is basically about the idea of asking for help. Um, and I'll start from the place where most men start from which is as sorry itchy um <laughs> excuse me for a second around the teenage years for most men i'm count myself as that in that path is we were kind of either told directly or inferred by environments we were in that we had to tough it out do we had to man up get serious stop crying act strong and be tough that's one of the things that men had to go through and it's one of the things that was really a challenge for me because I, I, I sort of knew better or well, they didn't do better at the time. I would just stuff things down. Thankfully, through various circumstances, I'm not going to go into detail, but about 12 years later, having been living in the United States for a little bit, I discovered it was actually okay to get help. And in fact, okay to dive into a place of being supported, served, cared for, and guided to learn to be a better person. I started this, this journey particularly um, around the middle of the 1980s. So I've done it for a while now. And so I've had lots of help. And I won't stop getting help because frankly, it's what makes me a better person internally and externally. It's also why I do the work I do because I know I'm gonna pass on the gift that I learned. Anyway, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So one of the paradigms is that men in particular are not those that normally seek help because we've been trained to like be tough it up and be independent. We can take care of ourselves. At the same time, a lot of women out in the world have had to buy into the same thing because they're attempting to, um, what I said before, and I didn't know I was going to go here, but I'm going to go here. I've said it many times about the business world was created by men for men, and women have been trying to fit in ever since. And the challenge with that is for a lot of women, they've attempted to basically be like the men, which means tough it out as well. And also because for a lot of women, they felt like they had to carry the a responsibility of not showing any weakness because weakness would be what would get them kicked out of the male society, so to speak. So that's two things that are happening at the moment as well. The third piece is, particularly in the area I work in, which is about love and relationships, everyone thinks they know everything about it because they were raised by parents, usually, who were together, usually. And again, this is a very general description because a lot of people aren't, I know. So it's almost like, well, I was born into a family, therefore I know how to be in a relationship. That's kind of the programming people run. But I, I offer, I, I do disagree with that, as I can speak from my own experience, and I speak for many. But another piece I want to give up on the table, I'm, I'm sort of creating a, um, <laughs> I was going to create a tableau, no. I'm creating a description of what I mean by this whole thing about getting help. It seems also that the area of relationships and love is a very um, ignored area, I'll put it that way. I was talking this about this a few days ago and I had read a beautiful post about this about a week ago about the journey that we go on we want to get physically healthy. If we want to get physically if we want to get for example if we want to go compete and be in physical top shape or be a sports performer then we'll go seek a coach or a trainer or somebody can help us with those areas. Like you go to the gym 
and I did this when I first went to the, when I first went to Gold in Venice many 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 years ago. Um, is I got a trainer because I saw so much and I got saw an overwhelming amount of equipment, and even though I could probably figure out each one of the devices, I didn't know what was the best way to use them. So I worked with a trainer, a coach basically, to set me up for success by putting me in the right sequence so I could do the right things and be effective. That's true of any area of coaching. If you are looking to, maybe you're looking to start a new business. So working with a business coach, which I'm not, just to be clear, because <laughs> I'm still working on my own stuff. I have coaches I work through to help me with that, because I'm learning as well, is that it's much easier to be successful if you go through the journey with somebody who's been through their own experience as well. Most business coaches who are worth their salt have made mistakes, have learned how to do things right, and have become ideally focused on expertise that can help other people, and they want to share the gift out there. Now, a caveat I need to say, because I was reading an article today about this, about the financial arena actually, there are a lot of charlatans out there in the finance and business world because it's easy to make stuff up on the web. And people, people state that they are experts in this arena because they have been to this school or they have this certification or they teach at this university with different things. So above all of this stuff I'm talking about here, you need to do your due diligence if you're looking to work with anybody in any area of work where it is business or finances or health or relationships or fitness or anything like that. If you don't check out the person you're going to work with and get to know who they are and find out more about them, you may be the, the victim of, well, having the wall pulled over your eyes, so to speak. So it's important that you realize that yes, getting support is a good thing. But secondly, get the right sort of support. So getting back to what I said at the beginning, the title, we have this paradigm, as I mentioned, for men and for women that somehow getting help would be a sign of weakness. For men, because it's ego attached, that we have to be tough and strong, because society calls on us to do that. And these are generalities, by the way. And for women, especially because of the fact that in the world that we, they're fitting into, which is a masculine world, so to speak, many women have been caught up in the paradigm where they don't show any sign of weakness or not do perfectly, because if they do, they'll be kicked out because they're women, even though the fact it's not to do with that. See, men, and this is the unfortunate situation, we're in a culture where men can get away with stuff as in not being successful as other people because they're men, they don't get judged so harshly. But unfortunately, women still, even in this new millennium, are still being judged because not only do they have to do well, but they have to be a woman doing extra well to compete with the men who don't do it as well, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's a whole other um, rant that I'll say for another time because that's a different discussion that I will happily discourse on at another point in time where I really have a passion about the fact that women aren't being respected in business and anyway not going there now so the relationship arena in the relationship discussion conversation there are plenty of people out there who teach this stuff I know quite a lot of them in the LA, LA area we've met up quite a several times but it's interesting to watch what people use as their qualification to be a coach in this area and I'm going to be careful because I'm, I'm not using any names because there are people I know as friends that might think they're the ones I'm talking about, but I'm not talking about any of my friends. Hopefully they'll trust me on that. <laughs> but the thing about it is when you go to see an expert in the area of relationships, what do you use to qualify them? It's one of the hardest things, by the way. At least if you're going to see someone who's, who's a business coach, they have hopefully demonstrated a business success. They've achieved success in business. They've done something in business to make them prove that they've done things right. And maybe they got a success in other ways too. But within that, let me go I'm back in the business arena again for a second. You want to work with a business expert who also, if you're someone who cares about your business and the people who work, work for you, has shown that their business is successful and everybody who works for them is treated well and is also ex successful as well. There are plenty of business leaders out there who abuse their staff and abuse their company and take lots of money for their shareholders themselves and don't care about the planet or anything. Doesn't that make me the, make me the business expert, but not the one you want to go see? Okay, I need to put that piece out back to relationships. So in the relationship arena, there are many people out there who are calling themselves relationship coaches, experts, and guides who may or may not be true experts. And yes, I'm putting myself on the chopping block for this one too. There are people out there who are experts because they got married last year, or they got married 20 years ago. And so because they've got married, they consider themselves experts because they had some bad relationships, and now this one's good so far. I have doubts about that one, by the way. There's also people who have been divorced who are coaching other people who've been through divorce because they've been through the same path. 
what I'm saying about this is, is you may have common experiences with the co people you want to work with as coaches. doesn't mean necessarily they're skilled. Because the other part is, what have they learned along the way? I know people who are coaches whose relationships need some serious um, over overhaul and help and um, counseling themselves. One of the reasons why I love doing what I do is because, as I said at the beginning, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. My work and my calling, my service to help women be supported, be honored, be respected in the world, in their feminine primarily, which includes relationship. Now, as you can see by looking at the screen, I'm not a woman. <laughs> I do have a fairly well-developed feminine aspect as well as masculine aspect, but I'm a guy, which is pretty obvious, I would say. But the work I'm doing is because I've been so drawn into this work over the last 12 years, 12 years? Yeah, 12 years. I just started to dive into this masculine and feminine work and I've really seen such an incredible, um, I have such a deep respect for women and their feminine. It's been what's really driven my work all the way along. That ties together with my upbringing in England because that was part of my DNA was about being a gentleman and being respectful, even though it wasn't necessarily a, hoity, a, a um, posh gentleman. <laughs> but it was, I think it was in my DNA about when we brought up, but how to respect women, to open the door, and that sort of stuff. And is that my respect to the feminine, if that puts, gives me a, not necessarily unique, but a rare blend of skills, but also a rare, ben, rare blend of perspective. So when I work with my clients, who are basically all women, that part is in my working with them. Besides the actual coaching, the safety, respect, and honoring I bring is part of my DNA and part of one, my work because of what I've learned and become and journeyed through. I've also had plenty of dysfunctional relationships, so I can speak about the, tra the traps they call into, and I've said many times before, I've taught from those as well. But the other part of it as well for me is that well, I've talked about this a few times, this is my secret mission, so to speak. But I found this being more declared in what I do is that I feel, frankly, that in my work, yes, I'm helping women attract healthy relationships, but what I'm really focusing on, as I've said more blatantly recently, is I'm really helping women have an amazing relationship with themselves. That's the first step anyway, personally, I believe, to have any relationship with anybody else, men or women, is you've got to have a good relationship with yourself first. This is the passion I work with. And frankly, this is something I've become very much expertise, ex expertise in, no, I become an expert in this. <laughs> I've got my pronouns messed up. Call my, yeah, that. Having been on this path since the mid '80s, I've been involved in seminars and teachings, having you know, having a lot of training as a spiritual counselor and having a master's degree in spiritual psychology, a lot of spiritual work in there. I've really found my way true to how to treat myself with respect, no matter what's happening around me. And that's one of the biggest lessons, by the way. Working with someone who's a coach, ideally, not only are they an expert at what they've done. They've also made a lot of mistakes, so they know how to get out of those mistakes. Because if you want someone who's going to help you, you want somebody who's ideally walked some of the path you've walked through, or at least has a, an understanding and a compassion for what you've been through because of their own journey through that pain they've only been through themselves. Because the thing is, what you've been through may not be, may be unique, but the, the, there's common experiences, which is having the, the pain, the judgments, the upsets, the hurt feelings, all these different things that everyone goes through, ultimately. But the thing is, do they learn from them? So my, my intention is to let you know, not say I'm the best there is, because I'm, I'm, I don't think I am, to be honest, but I am passionate about what I do and I do stand behind my work. And you wanna, f I'm gonna say this, if you're looking for help in the area of love and relationships, if they don't teach you how to love yourself first, I would consider looking elsewhere. Because, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go there. <laughs> if you watch my broadcast for the la on and off for the last, well, since I started, basically. One of the things I've talked about along the way a lot is about I have a passion to stamp out and eradicate codependency on the planet. Codependency for the uninitiated is a form of victimization, so, excuse me, self-victimization that we do when we put our parents in somebody else's hands. And you basically in a relationship, your relationships, excuse me, are often predicated on you finding somebody else to forget to, to love you and to take care of you and to make you feel perfect. That's a trap. So in my work, that's one reason, again, I'm passionate about helping my clients love themselves first and really support themselves. So when they're in a relationship, they're not looking for someone else to make them feel whole. In fact, anybody who teaches you how to get someone to love you whole, back to me wholeness, shouldn't be, have, shouldn't be helping you because <laughs> it doesn't work. It sounds romantic in a way, it sounds poetic, and it sounds frankly crappy in my book because the problem is if you're in that sort of situation, that person never disappoints you, you're, heart, you're crestfallen and heartbroken because they didn't supply you with the love you needed every single day, every single moment to make you feel okay. That's a lot of responsibility. 
my work is such that I help my clients love themselves, own their power, because this is the thing. When you love yourself fully, the power you express, the power you, you deliver, the power you bring to all your relationships improves everything around you. See, my, my feeling is every relationship you're in should be touched and inspired by your presence, including a romantic one. That requires you to do the work inside, and that's my speciality. I've been talking for a, few, a year, a year and a half now about my self-love practice, my self-love meditation, because I learned the lesson myself that if we don't love ourselves first, there's no way we can love somebody else fully because we don't have enough love to give. By loving ourselves and filling up our own batteries first, we become an overflow, we become a full charge to help somebody else feel loved as well. Not that I recommend that for a relationship again, because that puts them in codependency with you, and that's not what I recommend either. My, my wish for you my desire for you is to find a relationship that is equal parts giving and giving and receiving and receiving. That you're fully filled up with the love you have inside and so is your partner. So you can actually be in the overflow of love which makes basically the gestalt being greater than some of the parts. But it requires you loving yourself first which is why my work is so much about that. Even though I've been keeping it secret so much because I've been saying let me find, help you find the love of your life. With the in parentheses secret message underneath when you love yourself first. So the reason why I keep promoting my self-love practice is because if you start with that, it will transform every relationship around you, especially the one in the mirror. That's intentional, by the way. And when you have that experience of love and fulfillment, it transforms your own relationship with yourself, which includes those blocks and walls you've had up inside yourself to access more love for yourself as well. That's part of my coaching, by the way. So my self-love practice with my coaching is a powerful package. <laughs> so, um, But I hope you understand what I mean about this whole thing about coaching, working with somebody is you want somebody basically who's walked the path before you, who understands how to do it and does the things you want them to do in teaching you. Because again, someone may have the theory or may have the practice, but they may have done things differently than you that don't provide what you want. I've done codependency. I'm not doing that anymore because I learned the lesson. And if you're still doing it, I can help you out of that paradigm because I know the steps to take to get out of it. But if you want to stay there, that's your choice. But as I said at the beginning, working with a health coach or working with a business coach, you want to find somebody you can trust, you can rely upon, you can feel that they stand in your corner and will support you in being successful and winning. And yes, it sounds strange in a way to say it's a guy helping women, but part of the work I do because I've been doing so much work on the masculine with the feminine energy is that when I work with my clients, they feel the presence of that. And most women out there, I know from experience of what I've talked to, haven't found many men that they trust as being masculine. So they don't have a resonance, they don't have an experience of, they don't have the feeling what it feels like to be around that. In my work bringing that to my clients, they will feel that space so that when they're looking out in the world, they know what they're looking for. So by example, not intentionally modeling, which is my presencing with them, they feel difference, and that's the power of the work I do. So yes, I'm very biased, and I said at the beginning of this, I'm gonna do a little self-promotion here, because I'm really clear that the work I'm doing has impact. The work I do is changing the world one woman at a time. Well, if there's 20, 30, 30 people watching this, 20, 30 people at a time. That's why I do these talks. But my calling is to make a difference and this is part of the work. Speaking on stage and speaking to bigger audiences is coming, I know. This is part of the presentation, this is part of the message, this is part of my teaching. Because working with my clients is powerful, however, that's one person at a time. And if I can work with more than one person by this format, then it's even better. In fact, I've got something brewing for next month that I can't talk about yet, just the very, very early stages, but I'll be doing something in a group format with a friend of mine we're going to collaborate and bring something to the world that will change your view dramatically. Anyway, that's another topic for another time, at least a few weeks away. In the meantime, though, I will put some links in the comments that I did mention. My self-love practice, I highly recommend if you want to learn how to love yourself more. This is the easy way to do it, and it prepares you for having an amazing relationship with everybody else. Coaching with me is a, is a gift. It's a commitment, and it's a transformational journey. I will put a link in the comments. You reach out to talk to me, because the other part is, if you don't have a chance to have a free drive, free test drive with somebody, you don't get to know what they're like, I wouldn't recommend working with them either because you want to put your money down once you know that somebody you want to work with. Yes, you may love what I do, but until we talk, we won't know if we're going to fit together. So I'll put a link in the comments for a complimentary conversation with me so we can talk about where you are and what you want to do and how you want to work together if that lines up for you. And thirdly, because I mentioned at the beginning, my book, because book, my book is a compendium of resources. <laughs> it's 50 different teachings that will absolutely provoke new ways of being. If you're single or a couple, in relationship or not, male or female, it doesn't make a difference. There's value in the book. Some, not all the principles rise to everybody, to be honest, but there's good stuff in there for everybody. 
so I'm biased about that. So that'll be in the comments too. So my coaching invitation to chat with me first, my self-love meditation practice, which is my voice guiding you morning and evening, and my book will be in the comments. So you can get some help there. I think I made my point clearly. I would love your feedback, by the way, if this makes sense to you, if it lands, if it has resonance for you, please let me know. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please let me know that as well. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, which occasionally happens, somebody finds me for the first time after two and a half years, they're still finding me, which is great. You can find me on my personal page every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here doing my broadcast seven days a week. You can find my replays on my business page, which is barryselby.author. That is my um, archive of replays on Facebook. But I also put them on YouTube, which is easy to search, by the way. Oh, by the way, like my Facebook page, please. On YouTube, which is um, also my name, Barry Selby. So it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, the full thing. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there, you can find the replays. From my experience of using YouTube on my desktop, it's easier to browse the titles to find the one you want to look for than if you do it through um, Facebook. So choices. And also, I think from what I'm looking for on Facebook, it seems like my archives don't go all the way back. I think somehow Facebook is not keeping all my videos saved. About halfway through, they disappear. I don't know why. But at least I'm on YouTube and I have backups on my computer because I've got to have a backup plan. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. That's where you find my replays. I hope this has made sense to you. If you want any help, reach out to me. I'll put some links in the comments as soon as I sign off. And I invite you to take care of yourself. It's important that you get the help you need in the right areas of the life that you want to change. Find the right people that you can trust. Get the help you need. Transform your life for success. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.